We are back with more navigation. Last time we set up dependency injection for our navigation infrastructure, and that was a pretty big change based on what we were doing before. So I just want to go through and show off how to add a new view based on the infrastructure that we now have with the dependency injection. So what I want to do is let's boot up the application. So we're going to have a new item in our navigation bar. I think we're just going to have a page that shows like a list of names or something like that. But the main idea here is just showing off how we can add on to our current dependency injection infrastructure. And it's also helpful to just go through the full process of adding a new view to our application. So let's begin with a view model. That is indeed the first step. We're going to call this the people listing view model, people person, not sure. We're going to go with people. Okay, and we'll inherit from view model base. So we get our I notify property changed. And we're also gonna have a people view as well for this view model. So it's gonna be a user control, the people view. And just for debugging, let's put a placeholder text block in here so that we know this all works. We'll just say people. And now let's do what we gotta do in order to get this to display on the screen. So the first thing I want to do is map my view model to my view so that whenever the current view model of my application is a people listing view model, I want to show a people view. Actually, I want this to be a people listing view. So rename that file, rename the class, silly mistake right there. But let's get back to mapping that view model to the view. So that's all in the main window. We have our view model data templates that match up to the corresponding view. So let's just copy this one for the login view and change this to the people listing view model and that's going to map to the people listing view makes sense so now we need to get to this view and to do that we're going to have to set the current view model for the application as a people listing view model instance and that is all going to happen in the navigation bar view model so we're going to have a button on our navigation bar that will navigate us to the people listing view model so let's create a command for that button. This is going to be the navigate people listing command, which means our navigation bar view model is going to need a navigation service that will navigate us to the people listing view model. So this will be the people listing navigation service. And now our navigate people listing command will be a new navigate command, except it'll take in the people listing navigation service. So that's good for the navigation bar view model. Let's go into the actual navigation bar control and add a button for that. And I guess I'll put this right before the login button and right after the home button. So we're gonna have to update these columns. So login will be column three, account will be four, and logout will be five. And we're also gonna have to add a new column as well. The button will say people, and the command will be the navigate, let me see what I named this, the navigate people listing command. So set that as the binding. So that should all be good for the navigation bar view and view model. Let's pass in this people listing navigation service. And that's gonna be done from the app.xaml.cs where we set up the application. So we have a function to create a navigation bar view model. So we're gonna to have to pass in the navigation service for the people listing view model. So we're gonna put that into a function for simplicity. And also that's what we've been doing for the other navigation services. So the create people listing navigation service, we'll pass in the service provider because we'll probably need it, I'm thinking. And let's generate that method. And I want my people listing view to be inside of my layout. So I wanted to have the navigation bar. So we are gonna use a layout navigation service and I'm just gonna copy this from my method to create an account navigation service, which also goes in the layout. So we'll copy that, except now the layout navigation service is gonna be for a people listing view model, which means we will resolve the people listing view model from dependency injection as the create view model callback function that we used in the layout navigation service. So we're basically using our service provider as a factory rather than creating a factory class. A little bit simpler, I think, and a lot less code bloat. But if we're resolving this from dependency injection, we're gonna have to register the people listing view model in dependency injection. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna register it as a transient because I did mention we need to register all view models as transient, except for the main view model because that's kind of an edge case. But for these other view models, the ones that actually get set as the current view model for the application and also need to get disposed those need to be transient so this is going to be a transient for the people listing view model and we'll put the creation of that view model into a function actually we can just pass a callback right here as we did for the home view model so we will just instantiate a new people listing view model and that's pretty easy because right now we don't even take any parameters for this view model so that was pretty simple let's review what we did real quick before we demonstrate that i think this works but we created a people listing view model. We created a view 
for that view model. We mapped the view model to the view with a data template. We updated our navigation bar to have a button to take us to that view. So we also needed to update the navigation bar view model so that we had a command to do that navigation. And that was easy to implement with the navigate command. And then we simply updated our dependency injection setup. So we added our view model and also set up the navigation service for the view model as well. So now we click people in our navigation bar and there we go, that is indeed the people view. So now let's just make the people listing view look better. We're gonna make this header bigger. We'll give it a font size of 28, which I believe is what we've been doing for the other headers. Yes, we have, should probably put that in the style, but for demo purposes, we're gonna move on from that. Let's get some row definitions in here. So we have auto for the header and then star for the list view underneath. So we are going to have a list view of all the people and that'll be in grid row one. Our Heather is going to be in grid row zero. Let's put some margin on this list view. We'll just do 20 top and the list view is going to have to get its content from somewhere. And that's going to be by setting the item source to a binding on our view model. We'll call the property on our view model. I don't know, I guess just people. So let's go ahead and get that property on the view model. So on the people listing view model, we are going to have an observable collection of people view models. So we're gonna have to create that. And we'll just call this people, this is just the field. And then we're gonna expose this as a property. We just expose it as an I enumerable of people view models. And this will be what we bind to. And this is what we're gonna call people. And it's just gonna point to our people field. And the reason I expose this as an I enumerable, I've been doing this a lot lately, but I do this because I don't want any outside classes or components to add or remove items to my observable collection. All I want them to be able to do is enumerate over the items in the collection, and in this case, display them on the UI. So that's just encapsulation 101. And in the constructor, we are going to instantiate our observable collection. And I keep on rambling on, can we finally just make a people view model? Let's go ahead and do that. So a class, the people view model. Oh wait, no, this one should be person view model. This is gonna be person view model. That makes a lot more sense because it's gonna be a single person, not a single people. And in this case, our person is just gonna have a name. So we'll have a string property for that and we'll make it read only and we'll get that through the constructor. And let's change this to person view model and let's just add a few people real quick. So we'll have single to Sean. We'll have Mary and we will have Joe. I think that's good enough in the view model for now. Let's head back to the view and actually display these people. And we kind of have two options here. We could just display each person with an item template that is a data template and then just throw it in here and bind to the name property. But what I've been using a lot lately is grid view. So if we set the view to a grid view, this is really good if you have headers for your data. And of course, headers are nice for resizing columns. You can even bind commands to your headers. So I like grid views and those are made up of grid view columns. As you can see, we can set a header. So the header is gonna be name and then the display member binding. We're gonna be binding to the name property on our person view model. So as you can see, this is super easy to set up and that is why I love grid views. So let's go ahead and run this and go see our people. And there we go, we got our list view grid view of people. So not the prettiest, just using the default WPF styles, but there is our navigation to our people. So that covers adding on to the regular page navigation with the dependency injection setup. How about the modal navigation? So let's add on to that. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is show a pop-up that's gonna contain a form to add a person to our list view. So let's put a button next to this text block. And to do that, we'll make this a stack panel and it'll be a horizontal stack panel. Put the stack panel in grid row zero. And next to our header, we're gonna have a button. Give it some margin, maybe 10 to the left. And our content's gonna be add person. And the command, which we haven't set up yet, will be the add person command. Uh, that looks good enough. Let's get some padding too. So five left and right, and maybe three top and bottom. Let's vertically align center. And how about padding 10, five? Does that look better? I think that's good enough. Let's roll with that. So let's set up our view model. That should be everything we need in the UI. Let's get back to the view model layer. As we mentioned, we need a command and that'll be the add person command. And that's not actually gonna add a person, but it's gonna display a modal with a form to actually add a person. So we are gonna have a view model for that form that's gonna go in the modal. And this will be the add person view model, inherit from view model base. And the add person view model is gonna have a text box to enter the person's name. So that's gonna have to bind to a property on our view model and this will be a string for the name and we'll just call it 
name. And then once the name is entered, they can click a button that's going to be binded to a command to actually add the person. So we'll call this the submit command. So submitting the person's name. And then we're in a modal. So we're also going to have a cancel command so that we can close out of the modal. And we'll eventually set those up in the constructor. But let's get a view together real quick for this. So user control, the add person view. And this is going inside the modal. So I want to throw some margin on here. Let's go with 20. And let's put some rows in here. So I think we're going to have a row for the header. Then we're going to have a row for the content of the form. And then we're going to have another row for the submit and cancel buttons. And we'll have the form row fill the entire space of the grid. So header, this is going to be add person. And I think our font size should be 28 for our headers. And this will go in row zero. And then we're going to have the form, which is going to allow us to put the person's name into a text box. And this will go in row one. Probably put some margin on here too. We'll go with 20 on the top. And we'll also have two rows in here. Both of these can be auto. The first row can just be a label and it'll say name. This will be grid row zero. And then for the text box, that's going to contain the name. That'll be grid row one. And the text for that is going to be a binding to the name property on our add person view model. And maybe a little bit of top margin on here as well. I think that should be good. And then last but not least, we are going to have buttons to either submit or cancel the add person. And that's going to be a horizontal stack panel. So the orientation will be horizontal. This is grid row two. Get some margin on here as well. Two buttons. The first one will be to submit. And that's going to be a binding to our submit command on the add person view model. And then the second one will be cancel. And that'll be a binding to the cancel command. And probably throw some margin on the cancel button as well. Just spread out these buttons. And that should be everything we need on the view. We might have to play around with this some more, but let's map our view model to the view in our main window. So I just copy one of these data templates. The add person view model will be a mapping to the add person view. So first off, on the people listing view model, we want the add person command to display the add person view model in a middle. So we're gonna need an I navigation service for that command, and this will be the add person navigation service and we'll use that to instantiate the add person command as a navigation service or a navigate command i should say and that navigate command will take in the add person navigation service so now in our app.xaml.cs we are going to have to pass in that navigation service and we've been putting those in functions so we will continue that this will be the create add person navigation service let's generate that function and we want the add person view model in a modal so we are going to use a modal navigation service to the add person view model and that'll take the modal navigation store and a callback function to create our add person view model so we're going to do the same approach that we did for the login navigation service which also uses the modal navigation so we can paste that in there except this time we will resolve the add person view model from dependency injection, which also means we need to register the add person view model in dependency injection as well. So we can do that just under here. We'll make it transient and just instantiate that with no parameters. At least for now, it takes no parameters, but we do just want to get this to display on the screen, which it should. Let's see about that. So add a person. There we go. There is our view. It's a little bit small. Let's get some width on this. So we'll make the width 400. How's that look? That's pretty good. Let's get some padding on these buttons because I'm kind of being a perfectionist, but we will do, I believe 10.5 is what we've been doing. That'd be a good thing to put into a style, but there we go. That looks good. So I want to click submit and add whatever person's name I put in here to this list of people and then cancel should just close the modal. So let's close the middle first. So for that, we can just get an I navigation service and this will be the cancel navigation service and the cancel command will be a new navigate command that takes in that navigation service. And the reason this is a navigation service is because we will pass in the close modal navigation service. So now I click cancel and there we go, we close the modal. So now I need a submit command. So we're gonna have to create one of those. We'll call this the add person command. So let's create that in our commands folder, a class for the add person command, extend command base so that all we have to do is implement execute. And we are gonna have to get the name of the person that we wanna add. So that is gonna come from the add person view model. So we're gonna have to get that in a field. And then I also want a navigation service in here so that I can close the modal or do some kind of navigation after I add the person. And now I actually have to add the person somewhere. And you might just think, okay, 
Just get your people listing view model and add the person. But how are we going to communicate with the people listing view model? Well, the simplest way to do this and the simplest way to do any kind of view model communication is with a store. So we're going to create a store. We'll call this the people store and we'll have a method on here to add a person and we'll just pass in the person's name that we want to add. So I actually call this name. And when we call this method, all we're going to do is raise an event. So this can be an action and the parameter will be a string for the person's name. And this will be called person added. So whenever we call the add person method, it'll invoke the person added event and then pass in the person's name. So now with this pub sub kind of structure, what we can do in the add person command is first get a people store in here. And all this is going to come through the constructor. And now we can take the people store and add a person, the name of the person. Well, that's going to come from our person view model, the add person view model, which has a name property, which is the name that got typed into our UI. So we can pass that to add person. And then once we add the person, we will do our navigation, which in our case is going to close the modal. So we add the person that goes to the people store, and then we invoke this event. So who's going to receive this event and get this person's name? Well, that's going to be the people listing view model. So this is also going to need a people store. We can put that into a field. And what we want to do is subscribe to the person added event. So we'll call this one person added, which gives us the name of the person. And then all we have to do is take our collection of people and add a new person and pass in the name of the person that was added. So this should all work. All we have to do now is register the people store in dependency injection and then update what we pass into all of our constructors everywhere. So the people store is going to be a singleton because we want our view models to all have the same instance of that people store. Otherwise, the communication isn't going to work. And let's pass that people store to the people listing view model. So let's open this up. This is starting to get messy. So I would probably consider moving a lot of these callbacks and everything into different functions. Maybe split the container into different files for more organization, but we're going to keep it simple for now. So the people listing view model needs the people store. And then the add person view model will also need the people store. And we haven't updated our constructor there yet, but we need the people store and we need that to pass into the add person command, which needs the add person view model, which is this, the people store, and then a navigation service for after we add the person. And we'll just use the cancel navigation service. Maybe we should call this close navigation service. And now we should have everything we need. So go to people. We got our three people in here, but I want to add a new person. This will be, we'll call it tiger. So not really a person, but that's the name of one of my old cats, my favorite cat of all time. I miss you tiger, but let's submit this person. And there we go. Tiger was added to the list of people. So we kind of did a lot here. We added a new page the people listing view. And then we added a new modal pop up to add a new person. And then we also did some view model communication with this people store so that we could send the added person from the add person view model to the people listing view model. And then we also made all the changes we needed to make in dependency injection. This is starting to get messy, as I mentioned. So I might have a video where I go over how to organize this or at least the method I've been using in my own applications to organize all of this. But I hope this tutorial was helpful for navigation and just building WPF applications. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video and enjoy the channel, consider becoming a member. But other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.